It's very, very uncommon for a team to lose their best player and then almost immediately become better. In fact, it rarely happens at all. But in the few instances where it did happen, oh, it was very noticeable. It makes people wonder, perhaps they should have traded them away sooner. In the NBA, this phenomenon is commonly referred to as the Ewing Theory. In the 1999 playoffs, Patrick Ewing went down with an injury that forced the Knicks to play smaller, faster, a different style of basketball that surprised other teams. They made it all the way to the finals as an 8th seed. Would they have made it there if Ewing was healthy? People always bring up Patrick Ewing as an example, but the truth is, he was older at this point, and arguably not even their best player anymore. I feel like there's better examples to use. Anyway, how's going folks? My name's Andy, and today, let's take a look at 5 times when a team lost their best player, and immediately became better. Before we continue with this video, with the NBA playoffs just around the corner, I teamed up with DraftKings to bring you a fantastic deal. If you're eager to get in on the action, but you don't know where to start, let me introduce you to the DraftKings Pick 6 app. It's a brand new way to play daily fantasy. When you create a new account and deposit at least $5, DraftKings will do a 100% deposit match, up to $100 in Pick 6 credits. If you felt intimidated by other apps and websites before, look no further. DraftKings is so simple and easy to use. All you gotta do is download the app and sign up using my code, ANDYHOOPS. Then select anywhere from 2 to 6 basketball players, and choose if they're gonna have more or less of a stat. Then, you can track your lineup and compete against other players for a shot at huge cash prizes. Don't miss out on all the action this week at DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Pick 6 app today and sign up using my promo code ANDYHOOPS. Kyrie Irving The Celtics began the season with high expectations. After acquiring Kyrie Irving in a trade for Isaiah Thomas, along with signing Gordon Hayward too, they went from being a regular playoff team to a legitimate contender. The favorites to come out of the East if Hayward did not get injured. Kyrie was on a mission. For years, he heard all the critics say he'll never win a championship without LeBron. At times, he'd get completely disrespected. Remember when a reporter asked him if LeBron was a father figure to him? So when he landed in Boston, he joined a young, promising team as the leader and best player. He wanted to prove that he could win a championship without LeBron. The season went pretty well. Kyrie had the most efficient scoring year of his career, but unfortunately, he got injured towards the end of the season, forcing him to miss the entire playoffs. You'd expect this to be catastrophic. If any team is missing their best player, they'd be knocked out fairly early. That wasn't the case, however. Instead, this Boston team rallied together and showed how deep, how talented they truly were. They made it all the way to Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals, just one game away from the Finals. Without Kyrie taking up a huge chunk of the possessions, the Celtics' offense became less ball-dominant, with more movement, more passing. Their two young players, Tatum and Brown, stepped up and took on a bigger role, and they excelled. This was when the Celtics realized, okay, these two are the future of this franchise, not Kyrie, not Hayward, not anyone else. It's funny, because in the following season, the Celtics, with Kyrie healthy, they weren't nearly as good. They ended up getting knocked out in the second round. It was there when Kyrie had the worst playoff series of his entire career, one of the worst series in history for a player of his caliber. Some even said he single-handedly lost them the series. You know, we kinda thought the Celtics were better without Kyrie already, but this confirmed it. Plus, you can tell from their record. In two seasons, Kyrie missed a combined 56 games, including regular season and playoffs. In those 56 missed games, the Celtics went 37-19, a winning percentage of 66%. For comparison, when Kyrie was playing, the Celtics went 83-53, and 53, a win percentage of just 61%. Oh, the Celtics front office knew this too, and that's why they did not bother re-signing him, and preferred to focus on developing Tatum and Brown, thus ending the short-lived Kyrie Irving era. Number 4, Rudy Gay 
For a long time, Rudy Gay was considered the future of the Memphis Grizzlies. They were in the midst of a transition period after the Pau Gasol era ended with three straight playoff appearances where they got swept in the first round every year. They needed a fresh start. Gay was supposed to be that guy. By his second season, he was already averaging over 20 points a game. The Grizzlies fully committed to him. He was for sure going to be the future face of this franchise, right? That was until Zach Randolph arrived. While Gay was still taking the most shots on the team, his progression slowed down. It culminated with a season-ending shoulder injury where he missed the final 23 games of the season, including the entire playoffs. However, little did the Grizzlies know this was the best thing that could have happened for them. They snuck in as the 8th seed in the playoffs and completely dismantled the number one seed San Antonio Spurs. It was shocking, considering how inexperienced this Grizzlies team was, you wouldn't expect the Spurs to lose like this. It was the coming out party of Zach Randolph and the start of seven consecutive playoff appearances. Even without a championship, it was the most success this franchise had ever experienced. When Rudy Gay became healthy and came back the following year, it was kinda like they regressed back to their usual self. Here is Rudy Gay, fires it up. Short, taken down by Griffin, and the Clippers have won it! Gay was a high usage player who did not score very efficiently, and he did not fit in with the defensive identity of this team. After losing in the first round, they underachieved, and this team felt like they needed to go in a different direction. And so, at the trade deadline the following year, Rudy Gay was gone. It was after he left when the Grizzlies truly entered the grit and grind era. However, it was primarily their offense that experienced a huge change. Without Gay holding the ball for extended periods of time, more shots were now spread out between their three main guys, Conley, Gasol, and Randolph. The Grizzlies went from averaging 244 passes per game to 281 passes per game. Less isolations, more pick and roll, more inside-out offense featuring Gasol and Randolph, it was better than what Rudy could ever provide. The results speak for themselves. Shortly after they traded him away, the Grizzlies ended up with 56 wins. Up until this point, it was their most wins in franchise history, and they reached the Western Conference Finals, further than they've ever been before. He had his chance, and he just didn't fit on this team anymore. Instead of building around him, they went into a completely different direction and became more successful. Number 3, DeMar DeRozan. Maybe this isn't the best example, because DeMar DeRozan, who might have not even been their best player at the time, was traded for a player who was better than him. But he was still their franchise star, and this trade was a lot riskier than you think. In the summer of 2018, when the Raptors initially pulled the trigger on this deal, it was kinda controversial at the time. We all know Kawhi was always the better player. It's just, he sat out an entire year in San Antonio, so people were unsure of how serious his injury was. In hindsight, it seems like a no-brainer to trade DeMar for Kawhi, but the Raptors still took a huge gamble whether or not Kawhi could become healthy again. And whether or not they won the championship or not, he was gonna leave regardless. On the other hand, DeMar has been their guy for so many years, admired and adored in Toronto ever since he got drafted. In terms of the regular season, the Raptors won a similar number of games with Kawhi. But it was in the playoffs where Kawhi's excellence far surpassed anything that DeMar was capable of. He was known to be a choker, a guy who underperformed in many consecutive playoff series. Kawhi, on the other hand, excelled in the spotlight. When the lights are brightest, he turns up his game to a level that DeMar could never reach. It was one of the greatest playoff runs ever. And you know what's funny? When Kawhi left after one season, the Raptors' record did not fall off much, though their playoff run was a different story. After Kawhi's departure, it was quite clear that without a legitimate superstar, their days of contending were over. At number 2, Westbrook and George. In the 2019 offseason, Sam Presti and the Thunder decided to go into a full-fledged rebuild. 
After three straight years of first-round disappointments, they traded away their franchise player, Russell Westbrook, along with Paul George, who just had the best season of his career. Whenever you trade away your two best players, everyone assumes you're gonna tank to the bottom of the conference. The large majority of the assets they received back were future draft picks. But the several players they did receive were a 34-year-old Chris Paul, who many believed to be washed after a bad year in Houston, a 21-year-old Shea Gilgis Alexander, who was supposed to be too young to contribute, and a 31-year-old Danilo Gallinari, who just had a great season with the Clippers, and somehow stayed healthy for most of the year. This was surprisingly a very formidable roster. In fact, they finished the season with the exact same record as the Houston Rockets, the team Westbrook got traded to. Even more surprising, they pushed them to 7 games, almost winning Game 7. In 3 seasons without Kevin Durant, Westbrook's Thunder would always lose in 5 or 6 games in the first round, not even reaching a Game 7. So to have this ragtag group of guys, who nobody expected anything from, they got farther than the Westbrook and George duo ever did. Now that's quite impressive. Uh, why exactly was this the case though? Well, towards the end of Westbrook's tenure, you could tell he was starting to slow down. He was taking way too many shots at a much lower efficiency than before. Plus, there was too much of a burden on him and George to create offense every possession. The 2019-20 Thunder, however, had a more balanced offense, with multiple guys who can generate their own shots. They were also a very deep team, with only three players averaging over 30 minutes a game. Most importantly, it was Chris Paul's tremendous bounce-back season. When Houston gave up on him, we thought this was the beginning of CP3's downfall. He proved us wrong. Gallinari, like I mentioned, was always a good player. He just always had trouble staying healthy. In OKC, he did stay healthy. A Sports Illustrated article covered the 2019-20 Thunder, and this was my favorite quote from that article. While it was a disappointing end to a special season of Thunder basketball, it was a selfless group of high IQ NBA players that defied expectations and played with a chip on their shoulder to the very last moment. What could have easily turned into a complete tank job instead shifted into a winning season that immensely helped the development of its youth, primarily Gilgis Alexander. Learning from Paul and getting early playoff experience went a long way in preparing him for future stardom. Decades into the future, when we look back at this Thunder season, we'll see it as a transition period between the Westbrook era and the Shea Gilgis Alexander era. More than likely, however, this special season will be long forgotten. Nothing more than a blip in NBA history. At number 1, Grant Hill. Grant Hill made his mark as one of the greatest, most unique players the NBA has ever seen a player who some say was the predecessor to LeBron James. What people don't realize is, when he spent his first six years in Detroit, he used to get heavily criticized for his lack of success. In fact, in four playoff appearances, he didn't win a single series. His Pistons never made it past the first round. This brings us to the summer of 2000. Grant Hill entered unrestricted free agency and planned to sign with the Orlando Magic. The Pistons ended up negotiating a sign-and-trade instead, as they received Chucky Atkins and Ben Wallace in return from Orlando, two players who no one really had any opinion of. However, within the span of one year, without Grant Hill, the Pistons turned it around. They won 50 games, and actually got past the first round, something that Grant Hill could not do. Ben Wallace was the key in turning the Pistons from a bad defensive team to one of the NBA's best. Before coming to Detroit, his former teams did not know how to use him properly. Very rarely do you see a 6'7 center be able to contribute like him, to be able to defend players so much taller than him. He essentially went from a misfit in Orlando to winning Defensive Player of the Year in Detroit. Soon, with the arrival of Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton, and later on Rasheed Wallace, the Pistons started a streak of six consecutive years making at least the conference finals. Initially, when Grant Hill left the Pistons, they intended to start a brand new rebuild. Nobody could predict this roster of misfits and outcasts became the most defining Eastern Conference team of the decade. 
nowadays they don't get enough credit for the dominant grip they had on the East. It's an interesting what-if scenario. What if Grant Hill never left Detroit? What if in the summer of 2000, the Pistons made a bigger effort to get him to stay? If that was the case, this roster probably would have never happened. Perhaps him leaving was for the best, considering his injuries were devastating. Those ankle issues forced him into year-long rehabs, which eventually ruined his career. He was never the same player again after leaving Detroit. And those were 5 NBA players who left their teams and saw them get better. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Can you think of any other examples that could fit this video? I hope y'all enjoyed this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.